are all the plans that the Biden administration may have in terms of rolling back uh, some of what was done to taxes under the Trump administration, does that go out the window if the, if there's, if the Republicans can hold the Senate? Well, look, at some level, I think all of the plans that uh, President-elect Biden campaigned on are already out the window in the sense that um, even if Democrats sweep Georgia, it will be a 50-50 Senate with Vice President Harris breaking ties and a pretty narrowly divided House. Looks like Democrats are going to end up with, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 222 seats in the new House of Representatives, giving the Speaker a working majority of four votes. So I think a lot that the uh, president-elect campaigned on isn't available even now. And certainly, uh, to your question, if Republicans can win one or both of those Georgia races, then at least for the next few years, significant tax increases are probably off the table. So even if the Senate flips then, uh, Rohit, you are telling clients right now, don't worry about uh, the corporate tax cuts being rolled back. Don't worry about your income taxes or capital gains taxes going higher. Well, no, I'm not saying don't worry about it. I'm okay. saying it won't be as significant as that which uh, Biden campaigned on. So, for example, you know, he campaigned on raising the corporate rate from 21 to 28 percent. That seems probably in excess of what the political traffic would bear in a narrowly divided um, Senate and House that, you know, again, best case scenario for Democrats is a 50-50 Senate. And remember, in order to overcome a filibuster, which they can do uh, to raise taxes and, and do some spending, mm -hmm. you need a majority in the House and a majority in the Senate. That means getting 268 out of a possible 272 elected Democrats to all agree on a common set of tax increase proposals and a common set of proposals upon which to spend the money. I'm not saying it can't happen. In fact, I think that it eventually would happen. But I think the scale of the change will be much narrower than that which uh, Biden campaigned on. Megan, what's your take, given the two possible scenarios after the, uh, the runoff elections in Georgia? Yeah, look, it's hard to disagree with the idea that uh, the Biden campaign's tax proposal, uh, as it campaigned on, is out the window. But that doesn't mean that uh, a, a Biden administration can't get anything done, even if the Democrats lose the Senate in Georgia. I mean, tax policy isn't necessarily a Democrat versus Republican issue. It's an individual versus individual issue. And so I think there are some things that can be done, things like tax breaks for manufacturing or a Made in America tax break. That could still happen. Um, removing the cap for solid uh, for SALT deductions, that could still happen. Um, if the Democrats were to win in Georgia and, and could remain united, you could still get an increase in the top tax bracket, and you could still see capital gains taxed uh, and deductions taxed as income for those earning over a million dollars. So depending on how Georgia goes, you know, if, if the Democrats win, you'll get more done. Um, if they don't, obviously, uh, the administration will have more constraints, but that doesn't mean there won't be any tax reform at all. So, Megan, in your view, what are the most likely tax changes that could happen, even if Republicans maintain control of the Senate? Uh, so, as I mentioned, I think uh, tax breaks for manufacturing and a made in America tax break is likely. But also, um, I think you could get uh, agreement on removing the cap on salt deductions. Um, and, and finally, any to kind of stop uh, inversion, so anti-inversion measures, I think you could get bipartisan agreement on those things. So I think I think we could expect those. But some of the Biden administration's more, um, you know, their bigger reforms, uh, I think, on the corporate tax side in particular will be more difficult. Same question to you, Rohit. Yeah, so I agree in, in part and disagree in part. I agree that on some of the incentives for manufacturing, um, I think there's some bipartisanship there. There are some derogatory changes that follow from the 2017 law related to research expense and interest expense. I think those could be delayed, um, if not outright repealed. I would be, um, I think, more than a little bit surprised to see bipartisanship around lifting uh, or repealing the, deduct the cap on the state and local tax itemized deduction. I think Republicans feel pretty strongly that that's just good tax policy. Um, and so that one, I think, in divided government, frankly, even in a 50-50 Senate, you could see maybe around the margins some relaxation of the cap. But I think repeal of the cap outright, I just, I just don't see that on the table over the next couple of years. Go ahead, Megan. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you don't look at it as a Republican versus Democrat issue and look at it as a rich versus poor issue, the, you know, removing the cap on salt deductions seems more likely then because rich people tend to like that. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's it's dead in the water. I do think some other things are dead in the water now, regardless of what happens in Georgia. Any kind of green tax breaks, I, I don't think that, unfortunately, is going to happen. Um, I, I, that's the main one. I, th I think that's off the table now, regardless. Why wouldn't, of why wouldn't green tax breaks happen? 
Uh, you know, I think that the Republicans are, are staunchly against it, um, mm -hmm. and I think that some of the Democrats um, might not be united on that one either. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.